Hi, I'm Adolph Oliver, and this is a video clip about reducing rational expressions. Now remember again, rational expressions are just uh, algebraic fractions, like our example down here, fractions that have variables in them besides plain numbers. Well, remember, there's a standing rule here. Fractions and final answers must always be reduced. So anytime you finish up an answer that has a fraction, uh, you've got to reduce the thing. But now, one of the things that we've learned is that when you've got variables here and you've got more than one term, then what you have to do is you have to factor both the top and the bottom to single terms before you can do any reducing. Reducing can only be done when both the top and the bottom have been factored to single terms. Well, okay, let's take a look at this first example. The upstairs, x plus 2. And there's no GCF I can pull out of this. So the only way I can make this thing a single term is we use an old trick that we've learned. Put parents around it. Now, the parents then mean that this is a complete package itself, the x plus 2. It is a single term, and we're only going to be able to reduce it against somebody downstairs that's exactly the same, x plus 2. Well, the downstairs, hopefully this looks familiar, the difference of two squares. Both the first term, the x squared, has a good square root x, and the last term here, 4, also has a good square root 2. Okay, as long as the first and last terms, the two of them both have nice square roots, and there's a minus in between, then we know we can factor these into the plus and minus of these two roots, namely x plus 2 times x minus 2. Now, remember, to check this, you'd multiply these guys back. Multiply the two first, x times x gives you x squared. Multiply the two last, plus 2 times negative 2 gives you negative 4. And hopefully you remember that the rainbows will knock each other out here. So it's only the first and last terms we have. So we can see that the factorization of this x squared minus 4 is into x plus 2 and x minus 2. Well, we have the downstairs completely factored. We have factored the upstairs and putting parents around it. Now notice there is something common between top and bottom, the x plus 2. I can reduce the bottom x plus 2 against the top one because they're exactly the same. That leaves the x minus 2. So our final answer on this reduced down, we have a 1 upstairs, and what's left downstairs is the x minus 2. I often like to keep the uh, parents around it so here in the final answer. You can drop them as long as you don't try and do any more reducing. Because remember, you can only reduce if top and bottom are single terms. Well, we reduce this guy as much as we can. And that's one of the reasons why we learn all this factoring business. Uh, because what it does is allow us to do things like reducing these fractions. Okay, well, let's take a look at some more examples here. Okay, notice this guy here is already a single term upstairs and a single term downstairs. So we can go ahead and reduce away. Well, look at the numbers. 36 and 48, I think a 12 will go into both of these. 12 goes into 36 three times. 12 goes into 48 four times. Now, I've got a single x upstairs and x squared downstairs. Remember, if you don't see the power on a variable, then, of course, you assume there's a 1 there. <clears throat> Most of the time, folks don't bother writing that. Well, I can reduce a single x top and bottom. So reduce this 1x up here, goes to 1. Reduce one of these two, I have 1x left. Okay, here's what's left then. Upstairs, I've got 3 times 1, which is 3. And downstairs, 4 times x, 4x. Okay. <coughs> well, this was a case of one where 
We already had single terms top and bottom, so we didn't need to do any factoring. On the next example here, the top is a single term again, so we don't need to do any factoring on that. But the downstairs, we do need to factor. There's more than one term, and we've got to factor it and get it to a single term. Well, looking at this, there's a common number that will divide both into the 12 and the 8. I think it's a 4. Let's try it. If I factor out the GCF of 4, that'll give me 3x uh, minus 2. Now, let's multiply it back to make sure it's correct. 4 times 3x is 12x. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Okay, well, I always like to cross out the guy that I've just factored, so I'm going to look at him by mistake. So notice now, we do have a single term downstairs. Now, there's no 3x minus 2 in parents upstairs to reduce against, but notice the 4 and the 28. I can go 4 into 4 goes once, and 4 into 28 is what, 7 times? So our final answer here, upstairs 7, and downstairs 1 times the 3x minus 2, I can just write that as 3x minus 2. Now again, situations like this, I like to keep the uh, upstairs or downstairs factored. This single term up here, so there's no problem with the 7. But by keeping the parents around this, that reminds me that I can only reduce this against something that looks exactly like it upstairs. And of course, there's no such thing. Okay, well, let's uh, take a look at uh, a couple more examples here. Okay, here we go, and uh, see what we can do with these. Okay, the first one, the downstairs is a single term, so we don't have any factoring to do there. Upstairs, let's see, 21 and 15, I think there's a common 3, isn't there? So I can factor out 3 times... And what do I have here? 7x minus 5, I think. Now, let's double check this. If I was to multiply it back, 3 times 7x gives me 21x. 3 times negative 5 gives me negative 15. Okay, we factored that. Now, again, I always like to cross out the guy that I started with here to make sure that when I do any reducing, I'm looking at what's left here, the guy that's factored. Well, now, the 7x minus 5 in parents goes as a complete package. There's nothing downstairs like that. And the downstairs has x's, two of them, but there are no plain x's upstairs. Looks like the only thing we can reduce is the 3 and the 12. 3 goes once in a 3, and it goes 4 times in the 12. So what do we have left on this that's completely reduced now? Upstairs, the 7x minus 5. Downstairs, 4 times x squared. Okay, well, nothing common top and bottom. So, this is the way it can stay. Now, most of the time, you'll have to do some factoring both top and bottom. So, here's an example right here in this problem. Let's look at the top first. We got a nice plus 1 in front of the n squared, so that means that uh, we'll try reverse FOIL on this. I want two numbers multiplied together, give me 72. Remember, the plus here means I want the sum of those numbers to also be 17. Well, what two numbers will do this? Um, how about 8 and 9? Let's think about this for a moment. Let's see, 8 times 9 is 72, and the sum of 8 and 9 is 17. That looks good. So here we go. Let's start setting this up. I'm going to have n in the beginning of each of these binomials it factors into. Now we have to figure out the signs. The plus here. Okay, the only way you get a plus is multiplying two pluses or two minuses. Now hopefully you remember that how you decide which one to use Look at the sign of the center term. Okay, it matches the minus. So that means both of these guys are minus. 
Now, since the signs are the same, we can put the numbers anywhere we want. So I'll just put 8 here and 9 there. Okay, if you were to multiply these two binomials together, foil them together, you'd get back the original n squared minus 17n plus 72. Well, the downstairs is not much different. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, okay, again, reverse foil. And uh, we're going to play the two-number game. I want two numbers that multiply together to give me 56, whose sum is also 15. Um, yeah, how about 7 and 8? 7 times 8 is 56. What's the sum of 7 and 8? 15. So there we go. Now, again, to figure out the signs, the plus here means my choices are double plus or double minus. Once again, look at the center term to figure out which one to do. The center term is negative, so that means this is going to factor into n minus somebody and n minus somebody else. Okay. Well, remember, we got the n's because that's a variable we're using here. And the double minus, minus times minus, will give us plus. And, uh, oh, we figured the numbers were 7 and 8. Huh? Okay. Since the signs are the same, put them wherever you want. Okay, so we factored the top into a single term. There it is. Factored the bottom into a single term. There it is. Okay, let's see. What's common? I think the n minus 8, huh? n minus 8 goes once here. n minus 8 goes once here. What's left upstairs is n minus 9. Downstairs n minus 7. They are different, so we can't reduce any more. So I think we can write down now what our fraction is here. Upstairs, I've got 1 times n minus 9. So this is n minus 9. Okay. And downstairs, n minus 7. Here we go. Now, again, I would leave the parents around them. Because you have to remember that if you want to do any further reducing here, you've got to reduce these guys as complete packages here. The n minus 9 and the n minus 7, they're not the same. So leaving them factored like this with the parents hopefully will keep you from doing something bad. If you drop the parents, you might be tempted to just cancel the n's. But you can't do that because you no longer have the... Uh, whole thing factored top and bottom to single terms. Okay, well, let's consider a couple more examples here. See what we got. Okay. Let's get to this first guy. Okay, here he is. Uh, upstairs. Uh, 3n squared minus 15n plus 18. I think there's a GCF of 3 here we can factor out. So let's do it. Uh, factor the 3 out of 3 in squared just leaves me in squared. Factor of 3 out of negative 15 in should give me what? Negative 5 in. And factor of 3 out of plus 18 should give me plus 6. Okay. Well now, let's see what we got here. Uh, if we multiply this back... 3n squared minus 15n plus 18. Okay, it's good. So, so far, we've got it factored to this. Now, it is true this is a single term. But, remember, you always have to factor as much as you can because we want the smallest pieces to see what it is that we can really reduce between the top and the bottom. So, let's look at this one. I got a nice plus 1 in front of the n squared, so it's going to be a reverse foil if it factors. And uh, the 6 here, I want two numbers, multiply, get it, give me 6. The plus means whose sum is 5. Well, how about 3 and 2? Okay. Now, let's set up what uh, we're going to have here. The signs, of course, the plus here means I'm either double plus or double minus. And we look at the sign of the center term. It's minus. So that tells me we're going to do the double minus thing. Okay, well, let's write this down. 
here it is. Now notice we had the three out in front. Here it is. So I'll bring it along. This is going to factor into n. Remember we're doing the uh, double minus here. So n minus somebody and n minus somebody. And who are those somebodies? Well, the three and two that we found. And uh, since the signs are the same, put them wherever you want. Three and two, let's say. Okay. Well, now, now we factored the top as completely as we can. The reason, of course, we need to do this is we need to find all the smallest pieces to see if there's anything we can reduce. Okay, looking downstairs, two terms here. Uh, GCF looks like I can factor out a 7, and I can even factor out two n's. <clears throat> so, if I factor out 7 n squared, and remember when you pull a GCF out, you have to factor the most you can. Remember the G stands for greatest. So here we go. Now what are the leftovers going to be? Well, if I factor 7 n squared out of the first guy, I think there's just going to be an n left. And in the second guy, I think there's just going to be a minus 3. Okay, let's check this. 7 n squared times n will be 7 n cubed. 7 n squared times minus 3 will be negative 21 n squared. Okay. This is our factorization. There it is. Now, what is it that we can reduce here? It looks to me like the n minus 3s match up, huh? So I can reduce 1 n minus 3 here and 1 here. Now, the only thing left are plain n's. There's no plain n's up here. The 7 won't reduce into the 3. So I think we've done as much as we can here. The top is going to be 3 times n minus 2. And the downstairs is just going to be the 7 n squared. Now again, I like to leave the answer in factored form like this because then you can see if you can do any more reducing and you can't. But uh, many people will turn around and multiply this back out, distribute the 3 back in. So, you know, you can do that also. Okay, one more example to look at here, and hopefully you're getting the idea, and you see the important role that uh, factoring plays in all of this. This guy upstairs, uh, he might be a perfect square trinomial. Let's check. Remember, if the first and last guys both have nice square roots, square root of x squared is x, square root of 81 is 9, and then to test it, what you do is you multiply these two roots together. So x times 9 is 9x. And if the center term is double, and we're only talking about comparing the coefficients, the numbers, and it is double. You double 9, you get 18. So it definitely is doubled. So <clears throat> here's what it factors into. These two roots with the sign of the center term here in between. So this would be x plus uh, what we have here, 9. Huh? Okay, x plus 9, quantity squared. Okay, <clears throat> here's the upstairs. And we used our perfect square trinomial method to uh, factor that. Okay, downstairs. First and last guys have nice square roots. We get x and 3, but then if you multiply those together, you get 3x and double it. That's not double 3. Uh, double 3 would be 6. So this guy is not a perfect square trinomial like the top was, but we can try and get him by good old reverse foil because there's definitely a nice plus 1 in front of the x squared term. Okay, so let's see if it's going to work. What I want is two numbers again that give me 9, whose sum, the plus in front, I also want to be 10. Ah, this was not hard. I mean, you know, how can you get 9? You can get 9, nine times 1, right? And what's the sum of 9 and 1? 10. 
So there are the two winning numbers that we have. Now, the signs again. The plus here means my choices are double plus or double minus. Well, the sign of the center term happens to be plus, so we pick the double plus. So we're going to have x plus, and we're going to have x plus. Now, since the signs are the same, we can put our winning numbers here either way we want. I'll just put the 9 here and the 1 here. Now, if you multiply this back out again, you'd FOIL it. You should get this guy right here. Well, okay. What we're after here is trying to reduce these fractions. So, as always, we got to factor both the top and the bottom. Well, notice there is a common x plus 9 here. And there's two of them up here. So, we have 1x plus 9 left. Okay, well, let's see what we've got now. Uh, upstairs, then. There's a single x plus 9 left. Here it is. Downstairs, we had a single x plus 1 left. Okay. Now we have reduced it down. We can't go any further because x plus 9 is not the same as x plus 1. And again, I keep the parents around here just to remind you that these guys have to go as complete packages. Okay, well, now what you've done is you've seen the important role that factoring plays into being able to reduce these algebraic fractions.